But I'm telling you, it's not that. It's a substance that you reap here and now in this earth, and you reap it from the Holy Ghost who is here and now in this earth. Let me just say this first. I am a carrier of something. I'm a carrier of something spiritual. And if you'll pick up on it, if they pick up on it, then you can have that. See, a lot of people reject it because they don't want it. They don't want the thing that we're offering to them. And I'm telling you, we're offering a lot of stuff that isn't being offered anywhere else. I hope you understand that. And I'm a carrier of this message. Let's read here in John chapter 6, verse 60. Many, therefore, of his disciples, when they had heard, say heard. Heard. Well, they heard something. Did they like what they heard? No. They said, oh, this is a hard saying. Who can hear it? People have the opportunity to check out anytime they want. I don't want to hear that. You know, it's like kids. They plug their ear and they go, la, 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 la. I don't want to hear that. How often is that when God is speaking, he gets mid-sentence and can't say anything else? Verse 61, when Jesus knew in himself that his disciples, it wasn't the crowd that was murmuring, it wasn't the evening news that was murmuring, it was his very disciples that were murmuring. They murmured at it. He said unto them, does this offend you? And what if... Uh, you shall see the Son of Man ascend up where he was before. What if that? Mm -hmm. And people go, oh, yeah. Well, what if? Did they? Did Jesus? Yeah, he did. Mm -hmm. were, any, were any offended over that? Yes, because he had over 500 people that saw him raised from the dead, and yet only 120 of them ended up in the upper room. Mm -hmm. Are you offended at that? Well, what if you see the Son of Man ascend up where he was before verse 63 which tells you I hope you can see this this is an indication of what people are gonna get really offended over Jesus leaving and him sending another do we preach on that here is that the truth am I just making something up some other gospel or did Jesus actually leave and send another he did, he did right and who was the another Holy the Holy Ghost who's God in the earth today right you want to you want to offend some people some supposed believers or Christians go up and tell them that I worship the Holy Ghost he's God in the earth today which is really strange because they should not be offended over that verse 63 it is the spirit which quickens say quickens what does quicken mean makes alive so you got something that's that's not alive or it's mostly alive or it's sort of almost dead and then you quicken it did Jesus say this yes. who's the one that quickens the spirit quickens right it is the spirit that quickens the flesh profits nothing the words say words, words. the words I speak unto you they are spirit and they are life meaning they're spirit they're of the spirit and they're gonna quicken you according to life but there are some of you that believe not who's he saying this to now his disciples are there some disciples that don't believe this well Jesus said there was disciples that wouldn't believe this for Jesus knew from the beginning who they were that believed not and who should betray him and he said therefore said I unto you that no man can come unto me except it were given unto him of my father and from that time say that time, that time many of his disciples went back and walked no more with him well Jesus must have made a mistake because it looks like his half his crowd left and didn't want to walk with him anymore was he making a mistake no how many people were with Jesus when he was on the cross everybody left him just a couple of sinners there hanging out with him so it doesn't mean you're wrong if everybody leaves you verse 67 then said Jesus unto the twelve he's going right back to the you know his mainstay people what does he say to them I'm sorry I hope I didn't offend you because if I offended you I really I didn't really mean that and maybe we could discuss it and have a discussion over what I should be saying and what I shouldn't say that's the new modern translation mm -hmm. 
then said jesus unto the twelve will you also go away ask yourself the question if if they turned around and said yeah i can't handle this i'm out of here what would jesus have done would he have changed he couldn't he, could, he had to keep going in verse 68 then simon peter answered him lord of whom shall we go thou hast the words of eternal life say thou hast, thou hast the, words the words of eternal life, of eternal life. now the words eternal life if you look them up there's you know different translations you say but perpetual life the words of eternal life or the word zoe the word zoe is really you know translated it means the life that lives itself mm -hmm. it keeps living by itself just having that is enough say just having that, just having that. Is, enough. is enough so who had the word now remember jesus say said the words i say our spirit and life mm -hmm. and then peter said you have the words of eternal life and he's like nobody else has them nobody else has these words that i'm looking for and he said where else are we going to go you have the words of eternal life are you here yeah. the words of eternal life would that make any difference if somebody had words of eternal life and some people didn't have words of eternal life now the people most people think okay that means a message of salvation that when I die I go to heaven and then I live forever that's what most people because they've been religiously taught that what that's what that means Galatians chapter 6 verse 7 be not deceived God is not mocked for whatsoever a man sows that shall he also reap he that sows to the flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption he that sows to the spirit shall of the spirit reap mm -hmm. everlasting life so you're reaping a something mm -hmm. say a something. a something it's a something it's actually a substance that you reap is this substance that you reap only when you die and go to heaven is that what he said here no let me read it that way so you can understand it for he that sows to the flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption when he dies and goes to heaven but he that sows to the spirit shall of the spirit reap life everlasting when he dies and goes to heaven that's what most people read isn't it yeah. but I'm telling you it's not that it's a substance that you reap here and now in this earth and you reap it from the Holy Ghost who is here and now in this earth would you argue with me about that that the Holy Ghost is here and now in the earth he's here and now in the earth right yeah. and he has a substance that he gives to you that you reap from him a sub say a substance, a substance. that he is eternal life it's perpetual life it's the life that lives itself it's a substance I hope I'm getting this across it is now the power of perpetual life or, or everlasting life here and now is equivalent to youth renewal in the natural body now I've been in this business for many years coming up on 30 years now I've been in the ministry preaching from the age of 17 and on I've been you know called to the ministry or whatever you want to call it I've been in this and I've been in the ministry I and I I submit myself to people that uh, have the word and I know they're anointed and not one time not once did I ever hear a message on youth renewal not one time maybe you maybe you have I don't know I doubt it because I've been around the block several times not once did I hear a message on renewing your youth and yet what does Psalms 103 say to forget not all his benefits who renews thy youth who renews your youth Holy Ghost renews your youth right yes. why would he do that how does he do that he does it because that's what he does he does it with everlasting life giving it to you quickening your mortal body everlasting life on this side quickens you unto life the power of youth renewal is on this side is the equivalent of everlasting life when you worship the Holy Ghost who's God in the earth today should you worship the Holy Ghost yes. is he God in the earth today yes. should you worship God 
yes yeah, so when you go I worship you Holy Ghost it opens up this room to you where he begins to reveal things to you and one of those things is this thing called youth renewal it's akin to everlasting life on this side are you here youth renewal is a substance you can reap he that sows to the spirit shall of the spirit reap what everlasting life this substance of everlasting everlasting life when i sow to the spirit i'm sowing to the spirit i worship you holy ghost i worship you holy ghost i worship you holy ghost and i thank you for renewing my youth because i'm as i'm worshiping the holy ghost he begins to renew my youth mm -hmm. and i'm telling you it's a substance that you reap from him i hope i can get this across the power of youth renewal is an addictive substance once you have some of it you need to have more of it i'm telling you i've experienced some of the youth renewing power and it, it is a thing unlike anything else it's a substance that he gives to you that you immediately go that is everything i want you have the words of everlasting life that's what peter was saying to jesus I can't go anywhere else because you're the only one that has those words Jesus had a substance something that they were becoming addicted to and I'm telling you go he's telling me he's telling you. sometimes you just you just have to tell people your experience and your testimony of what it is but when you get over there and you worship the Holy Ghost and he starts to give you some of this then there's nothing else that replaces that you got to have it I gotta, I gotta have it you gotta have it an addictive substance once you have it or you taste of it you want more are you here yes. it's very close to doing I worship you Holy Ghost or using the words I worship you Holy Ghost because nothing else matters when you get there you get to that place of worshiping the Holy Ghost it seems like everything else doesn't it doesn't matter anymore when you get that addictive substance that the Holy Ghost gives which is eternal life are you here mm -hmm. what's it all about it's all about eternal life right but on this side it's not just about dying and going to heaven it's about the substance of eternal life nothing else matters if that's the case what would heaven be for someone like that heaven would be an unending supply of that would it not mm -hmm. if I was addicted to something that the Holy Ghost is giving I sow to the Holy Ghost and I reap ever let what do I reap if I sow to the Holy Ghost what's the answer what do I reap if I sow to the Spirit I of the Spirit mm -hmm. reap life. everlasting life this perpetual life this thing this substance right heaven therefore would be an unlimited supply doesn't that make sense mm -hmm. I hope I'm getting this across now people that on this side it's akin to youth renewal on that side everlasting life is perpetual youth renewal can you understand that mm -hmm. so if everlasting let's get let's just take it back to the religious stance if I die and I go to heaven and I have everlasting life and I go to heaven what does that mean I just get older and older and older and older until we all look like raisins for eternity no what is everlasting life it is youth renewal in heaven everlasting life is youth renewal what then would everlasting life be over here on this side something else it's well that when you die you get it that's not what he said you don't die and get it he says when you sow to the spirit you of the spirit reap this substance it's a substance that they are all having while they're in heaven and it renews their youth <laughs> All right, go to Matthew chapter 17 you there yeah. let's see after six days Jesus you know him right mm -hmm. takes Peter James and John his brother now remember what they Peter was the one who said you have the words of everlasting life mm -hmm. James and John his brother and brings them up into a high mountain apart and was transfigured before them Ooh, and his face did shine as the Sun his raiment was white as light and behold say behold, behold. was behold mean uh, look yeah look at that look see 
behold there appeared unto them Moses and Elias or Elijah talking with him they must have been really old by then right mm -hmm. how'd they even get there must have had some kind of heavenly wheelchair or stretcher or something is that the case no it's a, otherwise Peter might even have said that behold you guys are really old I've never seen anyone as old well of course not because they were having and experiencing the substance of everlasting life on the other side we understand that right mm -hmm. really that's my my point here is that people from the other side are yeah they're older in time but they're not older in their bodies and what would you call that everlasting life what do we reap over here everlasting life when we sow to the spirit well of the spirit we reap that say of the spirit, of the spirit. We, reap that. we reap that so if I'm worshiping the Holy Ghost I'm sowing to the spirit if I say things about the Holy Ghost according to his word right mm -hmm. one of which I should be saying which I'm not forgetting is that he renews my youth I'm going to reap everlasting life as a function of youth renewal on this side who do I reap it from the Holy Ghost this is a good message by the way I'm telling you once you've tasted of this thing called eternal life and it's not just the concept that you tasted of that oh uh, when I die I go to heaven you, oh you tasted of a concept no when you taste of a substance that comes from the Holy Ghost that renews your youth you know I've got to have more of that are you here mm -hmm. Hebrews chapter 6 let's just read from verse 1 therefore leaving the principles of principles of the doctrine of Christ let us go on to perfection not laying again the foundation of repentance from dead works and of faith towards God and of doctrine of baptism baptisms and of the laying on of hands and of the resurrection of the dead and of eternal judgment and this we will do we're gonna go on mm -hmm. to perfection this we will do if God permit verse 4 for it is impossible for those who are once enlightened have what tasted of the heavenly gift and were made partakers of the Holy Ghost say tasted, tasted. of the heavenly gift, the heavenly gift. And, were and were made partakers of the Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost and have tasted the good word of God and the powers of the world to come what would be the powers of the world to come everlasting life right so is he talking about tasting of the powers of the world to come where is he talking about tasting of those powers here and now in this side and that's the number one mistake that most religious people make is they put everything off till heaven I'm gonna get healed when I get to heaven you won't need healing when you get to heaven you'll be just be healed when you get to heaven right yes. what about youth renewal forget not about youth renewal where do you need that well when I get to heaven I'll need it well of course but that's that doesn't really even need to be said it's now that we part say now yeah. that we partake of everlasting life which is akin to youth renewal have I made that point yet I hope so the everlasting life on the other side is renewing of their youth perpetually over here everlasting oh must be something else something we can't understand because you're making it too complex it's youth renewal say it's youth renewal. it's youth renewal everlasting life is youth renewal are you getting this have you ever heard anyone else say that ever that everlasting life is youth renewal we all kind of know that that's what it is but we put it off to the other side are we supposed to just, it says powers of the world to come tasting of it partakers of it tasted of the heavenly gift tasted of the good word of God what word of God you have the words of everlasting life you could just insert youth renewal in there you have the words of youth renewal I'm telling you, you get addicted to youth renewal you won't want anything else it's a foretaste of what's to come 
see a lot of people have never seen this in the word how can they believe in something they've never seen yeah. right and how can they hear without a preacher they got to hear it well I'm preaching it because of that mm -hmm. that's how faith comes Amen. Ephesians chapter 1 I'm tell you where I got it I'm not trying to hide it I got it from the room of Holy Ghost worship mm -hmm. you worship in him enough he gives you something Amen. remember I preached on that over and over he'll give you something that he's not giving anyone else yeah everlasting life Ephesians chapter 1 let's look at verse 13 in whom you also trusted you there Ephesians chapter 1 verse 13 in whom you also trusted after that you heard the word of truth the gospel of your salvation in whom also after that you believed you were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise who would that be the Holy Ghost you were sealed with the Holy Ghost the Holy Ghost of promise calls him the promise again which is the earnest of our inheritance what's your inheritance well you know that's forever but the earnest is a down payment so to speak right mm -hmm. it's a guarantee it's a security it's a security pot deposit it's of the same thing that your inheritance would be but it's in a smaller measure mm -hmm. he's not saying you're gonna live forever on the earth but it's the same thing that's my point it comes from the Holy Ghost who quickens your mortal body so who's the who's the security who's the earnest of our inheritance the Holy Ghost mm -hmm. what does he do what does he give you youth renewal because that's the same thing mm -hmm. as everlasting life are you getting this yeah. i think that you are and people don't know about the holy ghost that he renews their youth few know that he heals their body right they've forgotten about that who's the one that quickens your body the holy ghost who's the one that does all the gifts of the spirit Holy Ghost who's God in the earth today Holy Ghost who renews your youth Holy Ghost say the Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost. Renews, renews my youth, my youth. is it something he does, he does. <laughs> yes he does it's one of the biggest thing he does why has this been under a bushel for so long it's his thing it's what he does you know and I've, I've met, been meditating on this a while and I'm just dumbfounded over it here we have Abraham and Sarah who were the part of the founders of our faith mm -hmm. what is the number one thing that God did to bring the the inheritance which was Isaac into the earth what was the number one thing he renewed their youth and yet oh no that doesn't mean anything that that's just something God did it's something God does it's not something God did only it's something he does it's part of who he is what's he do when he gets to heaven renews people's youth brings them back to their productive years it's a wonderful thing See, these people don't know the Holy Ghost if you ask me and it come that's what it comes down to people that don't know this they don't know this about him I guess that's the way I can say it because I would say they don't really know him this is what he does you get close to him and he just does it to you mm -hmm. that's why he said to Sarah I'm gonna come visit her and do something to her so often the things in the word when God reveals it to you it's like duh how did we not see this before yeah. you know I'm, I say the things hey the Holy Ghost is God in the earth today and you walk with him by saying words you think I was speaking some kind of strange language out of some weird cult you know that sacrifices guinea pigs or something this is scripture this is where we should be in our day and age in the dispensation of the Holy Ghost we should be walking with him and learning what his everlasting life is and what it does mm -hmm. say what it, what it is and what it does, what it does. well what does everlasting life do why is that such a difficult stupid question to ask well what does the everlasting life do on this side of life on this side of dying going to heaven it quickens your body and renews your youth Romans chapter 8 are you excited about this mm -hmm. I hope you are because these words that I speak to you are life their spirit and life and they go in they begin to affect your spiritual man and and quickens him with everlasting life 
Now everybody would be fine with that. Oh, it quickened me with everlasting life. What is that? Youth renewal. Romans chapter 8 verse 11. But if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal body mortal means subject to death make alive mm -hmm. your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwells in you you know the holy ghost doesn't dwell in dead bodies did you know that mm -hmm. so this has to be talking about people that are not dead but subject to death that's what that word means mortal means subject to death mm -hmm. what's he gonna do this holy ghost He's going to quicken or make alive, mm -hmm. remember, everlasting life, your mortal body. What could that possibly only mean? Youth renewal. He renews your youth. Say, He renews, he renews. My, youth. my youth. 